We're just about ready to start planting, guys. <laughs> Okay, first off, you guys are gonna have to excuse my voice. I don't know if it's allergies or a cold or what exactly I've got, but that mixed with the fact that uh, one of my good buddies got married on Saturday in a surprise wedding where I was the best man and didn't even know it, uh, that's been pretty hard on my voice. So congratulations, Derek and Taryn. For the rest of you, you can see we are busy getting ready for planting. We've got an awful lot going on. We got the 8260 in here. A lot of you guys maybe didn't even realize that we had one. Uh, it's dirty, it sat in the shed all winter over there, but uh, we're getting this ready to go on the rock picker and the roller. Uh, we're going to put this on the rock picker instead of the 6410 because it tends to carry a little bit better across the fields. We've got the sprayer ready, we put the duels on that the other day, got the computer all going on there. That is a 4830 John Deere that we picked up uh, about a year and a half ago now. Over here we've got the 9560 RT. That is on our 55 foot digger or field cultivator, if you guys want to call it that. Technically, uh, some people do call it a field cultivator, but technically, when you're in Minnesota, we call that a digger because it digs. That's what it does. So I'm going to go through that. I'm going to put some new shanks and uh, some new sweeps on there, some new shovels, whatever you want to call them. These here, they wear out. This one's getting awfully thin. I'll show you guys what I'm going to put on there. There's one that's shot. That one's gone. So I'm going to be going through that, putting grease on that, checking the tires, doing everything there. The planter is basically ready. What I have to do with that is pull this thing out of the shed so that the tractor can grab the satellites and bring it down into the computers and I can set up all the measurements and make sure everything's calibrated so that we can get this thing planted with precision since we are planting our uh, corn using RTK, which is sub-inch accuracy. Um, and we're, we're planting it right over our fertilizer bands. So because we do that, we need to make sure our computer is set up and everything is just right here. And I'm alone in the shop this afternoon, so those are gonna be some of the things that I'm working on here. I figured it would be a good time to uh, kind of show you guys what we got going on here. As you can see, our weather has changed. It's a little bit windy here, so I'll try and keep the camera out of the wind, but there was snow here not too many days ago. Last week, Actually, right where I'm standing now was probably about 80, 18 inches of snow. Now you can see it's dried up. Things are getting drier around here. Um, the yard was a mess, but uh, it's really firmed up a lot. So I think uh, hopefully we're going to be planting by the middle of next week. I apologize for not getting any, any video out uh, between my last week's video and this one. My voice went away to the point where I just couldn't even talk, guys. I honestly, I couldn't get any words out. So. I apologize for that, but here we go. I'm back. We're going to start planting soon. Let's get it done. Okay, as I mentioned before, I've got to go through this tractor and make sure the computers are all set up correctly. This iPad here is going to have my FieldView Pro on it which I will be looking at from inside the cab here to tell me a lot of different information. I've also got the John Deere 2630. That's the main screen I've got to go through here and adjust these settings and adjust these measurements just to make sure everything is set correctly. That way the tractor knows exactly where the planter's at and knows exactly what it's doing, knows exactly what machine is behind it. And that way we can document everything and be a lot more accurate with everything we're trying to do here. Going through these machines every year, every spring and fall is kind of uh, kind of like learning to ride a bicycle again. We use them a couple times a year, but I just don't go through them super often. Once we set them up, we kind of have ourselves set up. So in order to get the measurements right and the machines right, it's kind of like teaching yourself how to use them all over again. It's not bad, it usually goes pretty good, but you gotta kind of toggle through and figure out where you're at with everything. Okay, as I mentioned, these measurements are what tells the tractor exactly where this planter is. We haven't changed the planter or the tractor since last year, so the measurements are still in there. They should still be correct, but just to be positive, I'm actually going to step outside here 
and measure those off to make sure that we don't need to change any of those. Okay, I got the measurements all set up. Those are all good. Now I went in and I set up my home pages so that I would have exactly what I want on the main pages so that I can uh, more easily find the operations that I need to run with this planter. So here I got the planter controls all set up on this page. This is the main page where I'll see all the information of what's going on with the planter. This is the page where I'll see my map and I'll control my auto steer and the fields that I'm on over here. Now I'll jump up to the field view map and start setting that up because I think I've got my Deer 2630 monitor all set up so I just got to make sure that this one matches it now. Okay, what happened is my iPad needs an update, a software update, and it's always a good idea to have the latest and greatest software updated on whatever you're using, right? So I've got the iPad updating in the tractor there. That's going to take about 15 minutes according to what it says. So I shut the tractor down for now. I'm going to start working on the field cultivator. I don't know if the camera, there we go. So for now I'm going to start working on the field cultivator here. And I'm going to put on some new sweeps, new shovels, whatever you guys want to call them. You can call them either or. We're going to be switching this here. Here's my box of new sweeps. So I got enough in there to do the whole machine. We're going to be switching to this new high efficiency design by John Deere. They came out with a new one. I think they've had it out actually for a year or two now. I'll show you the old ones here. Carry them over here for you. But uh, supposedly the new high efficiency one is supposed to pull easier on the tractor so you can drive a little quicker. There you can see the difference between the old style and the new style I'm going to be putting on. So for the most part all of these, pretty much every one of them on here is shot. We knew we were getting down there at the end of the, the year last fall so we just ran them till they, were, till, till they were done because that's how many acres we had left. So we're going to go through and put uh, I think it's 120 new ones on here. When you gotta put new sweeps on the digger, and the dirt keeps falling off the frame and down into the back of your pants. Hashtag farmer problems. Okay, I got new sweeps on. A couple other things I'm going to point out that I'm doing for maintenance on this thing here is uh, I'm looking for bench shanks. These are the shanks right here that hold the sweep. You can see if you look down the sweeps there, they lay nice and flat. That way they can get in the ground, get in there nice and deep like. And uh, if you've got a bent shank, uh, what'll happen is these sweeps will kind of sit at an angle and they'll kind of bounce like this and they'll wear funny. And uh, it's just not good, you know, nobody, nobody likes a bent shank. So I'm looking for those, I'm gonna replace those. Those will bend sometimes if you catch a rock just wrong. They kind of spring back and uh, they don't come all the way back so they, they kind of hang in the wrong uh, position. Um, I'm also going through and making sure that the shanks are all tight. A lot of the time this bolt here will loosen up. I guess I call it a U-bolt. It's not really a U but uh, this will loosen up. There's a nut back here and one under here. Those will loosen up a lot of the times or not a lot of the time but I'll probably find a half dozen loose ones on here so I'll tighten those up. Um, I'm also going to go through all the tires, make sure the pressures are set. I know they uh, tend to go a little bit low over the winter, so we'll set all of those and uh, go, over the, go over it with a grease gun, make sure everything's got grease on all the moving parts. Um, I like to do kind of one section at a time just because it's 55 feet wide and there's a lot to it and it takes quite a while, so one section at a time is enough. We'll do the center now and uh, then I'll let the wings down, we'll do each wing and, and then we'll go to the outer wings. Another thing we'll look at here is the drag. Um, the drag or the mulcher back here, you call it, call it either one, but the ends end up getting into the fence lines 
A lot of times they'll catch a rock or a tree stump or something like that and they'll bend back like this. So in order to keep them doing a nice job and not leaving streaks up and down the field, we'll kind of come by probably with a torch. We'll probably need a torch on this one and uh, a series of chains and come-alongs and some boards and, and whatnot. And we'll kind of hammer those back into place, heat them up and hammer them back into place so that they're as straight as we can get them. And then uh, we'll take it out into the field and probably bend them again. So that's kind of how we roll around here. But those are what I'm looking for on this field cultivator today. Believe it or not, it's actually been a lot more than 15 minutes. So I'm going to head back out to the planter and uh, my iPad should be updated by now. I'm going to go check on that. So it downloaded the update, but now it needs to spend some time verifying it. So I'm going to take this dang thing with me and keep it in the shed here while I go back to work on that field cultivator because that's frustrating. This old barbed wire is actually not supposed to be here. These deer field cultivators don't come standard with barbed wire wrapped around the wheels. This cast piece, which holds the shanks on, is not supposed to be half gone, and that shank is not supposed to be missing. Luckily, I have just the thing to fix this. Okay, that was actually slightly more difficult than I made it look, uh, but it's all nuts and bolts really. The big thing is reminding myself how to use this dang spring compressor every time I gotta do it. I gotta stare at it for a minute and try and figure it out again. Good news is, we actually found all the old pieces. Uh, we had already found them last fall actually, so the only piece we had to buy was this cast piece. Once again, I think the iPad is actually updated this time. So I'm gonna walk back out to the planter tractor and see if I can finish getting the computers all set up on this thing. I've got the field view connected for some reason. I had to replace this little uh, Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth puck down there. That's the, the Bluetooth piece that connects the tractor to the field view so that the tractor can keep track of all the data. For some reason it wasn't connecting to my other puck. So I don't know what the deal was. Um, this is the one that's been in it in years past and it connected right to it. So I got that figured out. Back to work on the field cultivator, as many of you like to say. Okay, I got this thing ready to go, except for a couple things down here on the tires. As I was setting tire pressures on the main frame here, I noticed a couple of things. This being one thing that concerns me, this whole tire all the way around here is about to peel off the main tread. So that was the worst one. There's also one over here on the other side that's got a pretty good cut in the sidewall. You can see something got into this tire and got into the sidewall here. I'm not real concerned about that, but this one up here, that goes in there pretty nice and deep like. So we're gonna take those tires off tomorrow morning. It's only about 6.30 now, but uh, we got plenty of time to get ready. It's gonna be about another week before we're in the field. I keep having people ask me how far out we are. About a week right now, um, and we've got just about everything ready, so we could be going pretty quickly whenever we need to be, so. 6.30 right now, I'm gonna head home, and I'm gonna grill some cheeseburgers with the kids, and uh, enjoy some time with them before we get really busy around the farm. Thanks for watching, guys. beautiful floor.